So look at somebody and say, blessings and favor are in my house. Coming up on today's program. When you catch hold of this, you're talking about victory in your life. You're talking about prosperity in your life. You're talking about happiness and joy in your life. When you get a hold that God has already forgiven you, the enemy is not going to be able to hold you down with anything. All you got to do is just trust God, believe God, stand on his word and walk in it because you have favor with God in every area of your life found out that the reason that I'm so excited is because I am passionate about that subject. I am passionate. I realize, I realize uh, uh, that uh, I was calling everybody for one reason. That they needed to hear a life-changing message of the gospel. They needed to hear a life change. I text everybody that I could. And I, and I figured out why, Pastor. I am absolutely passionate about the grace message. I am so, it is such good news that I try to find anybody that will listen to tell them, do you know? what Jesus have really done for you. It is, it is such a passion. It's such a passion. And the truth of the matter is, this is me talking. This is just me feeling. I don't believe that I've been able to articulate and wake up the giant that is within you. I, I, just, don't, I just don't believe that. I need y'all to pray with me and pray for me because I just don't feel that I have rung the bell. I, I think that I've fallen short of ringing the bell. Now, I know you all say, I know, I know you're, some of y'all going to say, oh, Pastor, you're great. I, I'm just, this is me. <laughs> Pastor, why? Because there's too many of you all that stay frustrated. Too, too many of you all are, are, holding on by shoestrings. <laughs> Too many people ain't going out and texting people like I text people when there's a message of grace that's getting ready to go forth. When you really understand what God has done for you, it will change your life. I am, I and, 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 it, and it won't change your life to the degree that you're just a normal churchgoer. All of a sudden, it, it, it will do something within you that everybody that you talk to, you will find yourself telling them how wonderful Jesus is. How incredible Jesus is. How fabulous Jesus is. You can't have a conversation. I can't have a pastor, uh, pa <laughs> Pastor Hardy. I cannot have a pastor that comes to this church that preach for us, that don't go back in that dining room and before we finish, I'm talking about, do you really know about grace? I don't care who they are. Because it, it, once the revelation hits you, you cannot sit still. You, you, you cannot be quiet. And, and, and so tonight, I so badly, and I, and I want you to pay attention because I'm going to try again. I'm going I'm to try again. I, I so badly want to light a fire within this church that will set this city on fire. In, 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 in the world, there was, a, there was a neighborhood, this is a, probably the worst <laughs> analogy I could use, but I'm going to use it. A neighborhood got a hold of some crack, and before they finished, the whole country had it. Because they found a way to make some money and they had to share it with somebody else. Jesus is better than crack. 
He, he, he is better than a, a, a shoe sale. He is better than a, than a dress sale. He is better than a house sale. He is better than a new restaurant. He is better. You know what I'm saying? Man, I, can't, I know that was a bad analogy. But when you find something good and great, you can't keep it to yourself. You got to tell, there is not a person, there is not a person that your pastor do not run into that before it's over, I am sharing the message of grace because it has so impacted my life. Uh, let, me, let, me jump, let me jump into this. I want to unite a fire tonight. So, 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 so here's what I believe. I want you all to pay. If you have never listened to me tonight, listen tonight. Open your hearts up and listen to me tonight. We have been given the solution to life and religion has been deposited right here to Christian Family Worship Center. It has not been given to every church. In fact, we are unique and different because we have something that no one else at this moment, now don't let me, I don't want to sound like we're the only ones have it. There's several people have it, but in Orlando, we have been given the charge to change this city. We, we have been given the charge to change the city. And I don't, un, bad analogy again. I don't know if you know how good the stuff you got really is. <laughs> you, know, you, you know, it's, it's the, how good this stuff is. So, 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 CFWC have been given the awesome gift. Look at me, look at me. We have been given, look, look at me, I want y'all to look at me, I want everybody to look at me. We have been given this awesome gift called grace to share with the world and we can't keep silent anymore. We're going to have to be like a fire that catch on one person, that catch on another one, and before you know it, this whole city is on fire saying, do y'all know the church over on the east? People are going to, people need to be saying, do y'all know, y'all need to go see the church on the east. It, it is something happening over there that's incredible. So, so tonight I want to talk about the match that's going to get it started. All right. All right. And the match that's going to get it started is three words. It is finished. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, it is finished. Here's what I want you to get in your spirit. Here's what I want you to get in your spirit. Pay attention. Pay attention to me tonight. I promise you this is going to bless you. Pay attention. Here's what I want you to get in your spirit. That Jesus did it all. Jesus is completely happy with you right now. Now, this is what I want you to do. I want you to find one person. Find one person. Find one person. Find somebody. Y'all find somebody. Look at somebody. Find one person. Find one person. Look at that person. You got them? Middle section, y'all got? You, I want you to find. I'm looking at some people who don't have nobody. You got me. You may have to get up and move. And, all right. Find somebody. All right. You got them? Look at them and say, no matter how you feel, Jesus is happy with you right now. Jesus is happy with you right now. God's grace is unconditional. We live in a world that you get what you give, but grace is not that way. But God's grace is given because of what Jesus did for us, not what we did for him. 
I, I was watching the show, I was watching the show, and there was this pastor on there by the name of Steve Brown, and this is what he said. This was powerful. Uh, he says, all of our lives, we have tried to be better. We have tried to work harder. We have tried to live right. Come on. And, uh, we have prayed, and we have fasted, and when we've done all of that, we still fall short. And so because we fall short, we are disappointed and we are frustrated with life because when we're not getting our prayers answered, the first thing we do is go down the list of things we haven't done and say, God, why isn't it that these things are not happening for me? Because I must not be living the best that I can. I, I got to pray more. I got to fast more. I got to do all of these things more. And so we're frustrated at life. Then we get frustrated at church. Then we get frustrated with people. Then we get frustrated at work. Then we get frustrated with our families until frustration happens until, listen to this, Grace tells you that Jesus likes you the way you are. I, I want you to get that. I want you to get this. I want you to get this. Frustration stops in your life when you realize there's nothing else you need to add to this that Jesus has done it all and he loves you just the way you are. Frustration stops. Everybody say frustration stops. When I realize that I'm okay the way I am. You got to believe that you are okay the way that you are. Now, why am I saying this, Pastor Freddie? Is because me as a pastor, I'm wondering, God, why aren't we growing? Why aren't we doing this? Why aren't things happening? Why ain't we? Maybe I need to go on a 40-day fast. Maybe I want to go. And, and the Lord spoke to me emphatically and say, would you just hush? You are fine just the way you are. Maybe it ain't you at all. I sent Pastor Hardy an a, 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 a email. I, I even start Googling because I get frustrated too. I was telling Pastor Charles, I get frustrated too. I get, I get like you all. God, what am I not doing? What can I, can I pray more? Can I fast more? Should I get some oil and take a bath in it? Come on, anybody feel like that sometime? That, you, 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 that things are just not going the way that you want them to go, so it must be something you're doing that's not causing it to go right. Ask, ask uh, 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 the kid in the Bible, what's his name? That, 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 that uh, 40 days, what's the name? Jonah, not Jonah. I'll speak, Job. That's Job. Job was doing whatever, all the stuff that he was doing, and people say, well, Job, you ain't praying enough. You ain't fasting enough. You know, and sometimes God just tests you to see if you just trust him. And it has nothing to do with what you're doing or what you're not doing. You're okay. The Lord spoke to me and said, you're fine the way you are. Would you just wait on me? Would you just trust me? Would you just bless me? The way you are is okay. And sometimes you got to remind yourself that it's not about your works, it's about what he's done on the cross of Calvary. Am I talking to anybody today? Because if you're not careful, you'll be going and say, yeah, let's go on a 40-day fast to get God to move on our behalf. Let's, all that works and all that, no, he likes you the way you are. All right, let's talk. So y'all, 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 let me give you some scriptures. Let me give you some scriptures. That's what he says. When we are frustrated, we are trying to reach a level that's not required by God, but required by us. Let me say that again. When you're frustrated in life, you're trying to reach a level that's not required by God but required by us. When you're frustrated, somebody say, when I'm frustrated, I am trying to reach a level that's not required by God. See, my frustration is trying to get God to move on my behalf when all I have to do is trust him and he moves on my behalf. Let me say it again. All I have to, 
my requirement is to just trust him. So when things are not going the way we want them to go, then we add work to it and further frustrate ourselves because now we done added our holiness to it because now we're going to add on prayer. We're going to get up at four o'clock instead of at five so that we can show that we're more holier. Come on. And then when things still don't go our way, then we just throw, what else can I do, God? Nothing. Because he didn't ask you to do anything the first time. What can I do to get my kids saved? Ask him. Pray and believe it's done. What can I do to get a promotion? Ask him. Believe and it's done. Because Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Jesus plus work cancels out favor. Talk to me, Pastor. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? This is such good news. Do you imagine how free we can be now in Christ to know that he's done it all? that he's done everything for us, that he loves us so much, that he's done it all. Did I tell you all? What does all mean? Everything. He's done all. Let me jump in. I got, I got a lot to read today. I, I hope this blesses you. I hope you bless you. God is not punishing you because of your failures. He is celebrating you because of your victory in the blood of Jesus at all times. Somebody look at this, somebody give God praise for him celebrating you at all times. Jesus does not count my sins or failures against me. Look at your neighbor. Look, find, find another neighbor. Look at your neighbor. Find one. I need you to find one. I need you to look, look at him. That's right. Find somebody. Look at him. Look at him. Say, neighbor, neighbor. Jesus, Jesus does not, not count my sins, my sins or, failures or failures against me. It is finished. It is finished. Finish. Now, I want just for a few minutes, I want, you to, I want for a few minutes for you to feel the freedom of that, to know that you are totally debt free in the eyes of God. Now, wait a minute, totally, I mean totally debt free. Come, come on, I'm, I mean totally. There is nothing holding you back from God's love. You are totally debt free. You have, at this moment right now, you have his full approval. Do you know how powerful that is? If you really believe that you had his full approval right now, what would you ask him for? What would you ask him? No, 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 no. What do you need in your life right now? Ask him for it. He fully approve of you right now. Ask him for it. Ask him for it. There is nothing standing in your way. He fully approves of you right now. Ask him. Ask him. Ask him. He's listening. He hears you. This is your moment to commune with him. Ask him what you want. Tell him what your needs are. Tell him what. You, he fully approves of you. He fully approves of you. Fully approves of you right now. Fully approves of you. Ask him. Say, this, is, this is your time to talk to him. Fully approve. There's nothing the enemy could say to accuse you. God fully approves of you right now. Isn't this a wonderful conversation? Isn't this an incredible conversation? Because while the enemy is trying to tell you that he don't approve of you, you could tell the enemy, oh yes he does. He fully approves of me. 
Now, let's jump into the scripture so I can show you that he fully approves of you and that you are forgiven and that grace abounds in your life now and he is fully happy with you. And when we really get this message, man, we'll be running out of here telling somebody who's got a, got a, got a problem in their life, hey, baby, when you cast your cares on him, for you can take my yoke up on you and for my yoke is and my burdens are. How are they light? Because you're not carrying any. Look, it, there's none for you to carry. I, I'm trying to teach tonight the best that I can. I, I want you to get this, that you have been fully approved by Jesus and he loves you now. Listen what 1 Peter 2.24 says from the New King James Version. Who himself bore our sins in his own body on the tree. Here's what the Bible is saying. Jesus took every single one of our sins, put them in his own body, okay? And he took it to the cross of Calvary. And when he did that, he bought it on the tree that we, look at somebody and say, he's talking about me, having died to what? Sin. Having died to what? Sin. Come on, talk to me. Having died to what? Sin. Might live for righteousness by whose stripes you are going to be healed. Word is past tense. You already are healed. He says he's took in your sins, bore them on the cross. Now sin is no longer applied to your life because you are dead to sin. So, did y'all know what it means to be dead to something? All right, if I'm dead to love, can I feel love? If my hand is dead, can it feel? My, my legs are dead, can I walk? If I'm dead to sin, is sin applied to me? No, I am dead to it because Jesus took it all and hung it on the cross. You are set free from what Jesus did for you. Listen to what 1 Peter 3.18 said. New Living Translation. Christ suffered for our sins once for all times. He never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He says Christ, offered, uh, Christ suffered for our sins how many times? If he suffered for our sins once and for all times, your sins are done away with. You, can, you, know what, you know what the Bible talks about the enemy? You know what the Bible called the enemy? He calls him the accuser of the brothering. So every time you go to pray, he comes along with you and accuse you of stuff you've done in your past. That's why it's hard for us to get our prayers answered because we keep listening to the accuser, not the person that has facts. He's accusing you of something that you have already been forgiven for. God approves of you. God is not mad with you. He's not upset with you. He's already taken his wrath out on Jesus for you and my sake. We stand in his his presence holy blameless and without a single fault so when you get into a situation all you got to do is talk to your daddy because he hears you am I making sense now, I, I'm not preaching like the uh, but I'm talking to you because I want you to get this I want you to know what has happened in your life you have been approved by God himself. You've been approved. Listen to what it says. Listen to what it says. Listen to what it says. It says, Christ suffered for our sins once for all times. He never sinned. That ought to catch you. Christ never sinned. So when he took, he had enough room to take on all of our sins. He allowed you to sin so he wouldn't sin so he can take your sins away. Do, wait a minute. Do you, he took, look at your neighbor and say, he took them away. 
they're not a part of your life anymore, people of God. You are righteous. You are holy. God approves of you right now. For those of us that have grew up in church, this is a hard pill to swallow. We have been taught all of our lives that we had to work through our salvation. And, and we continue to do it and continue to miss. And even on our best day, we feel great, full of pride, still miss it. And, and we've been taught, your works are no good here. Jesus did it all. Come on, listen to what it says. He says, he says, he sinned, he never sinned, but he died for sinners to bring you safely home to God. He suffered physical death, but he was raised to life in the what? In the spirit. Go with me to Hebrews 9.28. Are y'all picking up what I'm putting down? This, look at your neighbor and say, this is the good news of the gospel. This is the good news of the gospel right here. Hebrews 9.28. So also Christ was offered once for all times as a sacrifice to do what? I need y'all to read it with me. To do what? He did it once and for all times to take away the sins of many people. He will come again, not to deal with our sins because he's already taken them away, but to bring salvation to all who are eagerly awaiting him. Who is eagerly awaiting the Father to come? Man, this is great news, man that your sins have been forgiven, you have been washed clean by the blood of the Lamb, it is finished, and all God wants you to do is live the abundant life. Can you imagine telling people that all you have to do now is live the abundant life? Do you imagine how good news that is for people? Do you know anybody on your job that's a little nutty and crazy because of life? Can you tell them, could you go in tomorrow and tell them, hey, I found out that you've been set free and that you can live the abundant life? God's got you. Do you know God got this church? We can sleep because God got us. If we had to work and do something to get the blessing, then we'd be in trouble. Truth of the matter is, we didn't do nothing to get the blessing. He just blessed us. His will, his purpose, his, he just blessed us. Listen to what it says. When we first got saved, we were so gung-ho, we would hiked uh, about our Christian walk. How many of y'all was when you first got saved? Lift your hands when you first got saved. Anybody first, when you first got saved, y'all weren't hyped or... Y'all weren't excited? Anybody was excited when they first got saved? All right, put your hands down, put your hands down. How many of y'all realized that once you got saved and you were excited about Jesus, then you became tired and, 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 and disappointed? Don't raise your hand. Been tired and disappointment because you've been trying to keep the requirements and you haven't been able to quite get there yet. Don't, don't put your hand up. One of the kids put their hands up, say yes. This, we treat salvation like we treat college. We get accepted to college, but then we have to get into school and do all this work to graduate. I'm going to address that later. That just, but we, because we missed the mark and because we try to do it over and over and over and over and over again, we become tired of ministry. This was, this was Carlos, Bishop Carlos Malone was talking about. We get tired of ministry. We get, we get tired of doing it because you know what? We're trying to do stuff and show God how much we appreciating. It's almost like your child coming into your house trying to clean 
everything in the house every day make, to try to make the house spotless every single day. And you come home and you find something that they didn't do. How many of y'all know how discouraging that would be to your kids? To come home every day and they got to do the whole house to keep it clean. We got to keep everything clean, the mind, the, the, the heart, the, everything clean, only to find out that we miss something every day. And now we're praying to a God who requires us to be perfect, but we keep missing it. And so we say, shoot, I'm tired. I'm frustrated. I'm tired. When here's the real secret, there was never a mark for you to reach from the beginning. It was never God's intent for you to reach the mark. It was his intent for Jesus to reach the mark for you. See, I know that's, 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 that's tough. That's tough. All right, let me, get, let me prove it to you. Do you remember the Sermon on the Mountain? Are y'all paying, y'all paying close attention to me tonight, right? Now, you remember the Sermon on the Mountain, the Beatitudes? Jesus says, it has been said that you must love your brother and hate your enemy, but I say unto you, whomsoever get mad with your brother without a cause, Mr. Mark. He says, you heard that you shouldn't have adultery, commit adultery. He says, but I say unto you, whomsoever look at a woman and lust have sinned already. The standard was not for us to reach the standard for us to throw up our hands to say we can't do this. And once you come to the conclusion that you can't do it, he said, that's all I've been waiting on because I'm going to do it for you. That's the grace that he gives us. He's done it in our place. He said, it is, what else do you have? Let me finish, because he's finished. I'm going to get finished right quick. <laughs> Pastor Tulich, Tul Tulin said this. He said, exhausted people should be able to come to church and find rest. But often, what they get is a checklist from the pastor of stuff they need to do. He says, so, this is the way we think. So much good from you will get much good from God. And so much bad from you will get much bad from God. He loves you more when you're doing good, and he loves you less when you're doing bad. He says, so people are not living their lives from freedom but they are living their lives for freedom. They are not living their lives from salvation. They are living their lives for salvation. Did that make sense? He, he said, he, he's saying, in other words, instead of us having the victory in God, and fighting from our place of victory, we are all fighting for the victory. When God never told us to fight for the victory, God told us to fight from our place of victory. We have already won. Am I making sense? All right, all right, all right. Y'all, some of y'all looking at me funny, but that's all right. I'm trying to help you. This is what I say. We kill ourselves trying to win over God's approval. Can I tell you something? He likes you just the way you are. Would you look at somebody and say, he likes me just the way I am? All right, so when we, so, so let's jump right quick to Hebrews 10. I'm almost through. I'm almost through. Hebrews 10, 16. When Christ paid your sin debt on the cross, 
His final words were, it was finished. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Right. Hebrews 10, 16. This is the new covenant I will make with my people on that day, saith the Lord. I will put my laws in their hearts and I will write them on their, on their minds. Verse 17. Then he said, I will never again remember their sins and lawless deeds. Would somebody read that for me? Say it again. What did he say? Say it again. He says, I'm never again going to remember your sins and lawless deeds. God is not thinking about what you've done in your past. He's already forgiven it through the blood of Jesus Christ of your life, people of God. And when you catch hold of this, you're talking about victory in your life. You're talking about prosperity in your life. You're talking about happiness and joy in your life. When you get a hold that God has already forgiven you, the enemy is not going to be able to hold you down with anything. All you got to do is just trust God, believe God, stand on his word and walk in it because you have favor with God in every area of your life. You are the one that God is talking about when he say, blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, for he meditates on it day and night. That man shall be you, you, you shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water, and his leaves shall not wither, and whatsoever you do do shall prosper. Look at your name and say, I got a prospering spirit. Whew. God has no more wrath for his children because he poured it all out on Jesus. Do you get that? It would be double jeopardy, people of God, for God to cause, have Jesus pay for your sins, then charge you for your sins. Either he paid for them, or he didn't. Either he paid for the bill. If I go to eat, and Pastor Hardy pays the bill, and the waitress come and ask me for some more money, my question is, he didn't pay the bill. But why would he pay the bill and you ask me for more money? That's unjust, isn't it? So if he paid the bill, then the bill is paid. So I'm free to eat whatever I want to eat and walk out and don't have to pay anything. Well, if Jesus paid for my sins, then they're paid. Why am I going to have to pay for what he paid for? He said, it is finished. He says, I've never sinned. So Jesus took all of our, God took all of our sins, placed them on Jesus, put the wrath on Jesus so that you and I would walk free. That's the good news of the gospel. You're not charged anymore. The good news of the gospel that God's not mad with you anymore. The good news of the gospel that you have been set free. The goodness of the gospel that you are a friend of God. The goodness of the gospel is you stand in his presence holy, blameless, and without a single fault. Why are you living beneath your privilege? and keep allowing the enemy to tell you that you're not good enough. He approves of you. Your credit is good with him. Because of what he did on the cross. Hey Amen. Can I have five more minutes? Oh, I like this. Steve said in the program, since y'all didn't watch it, I'm kind of going through some of it. It so blessed me. It so blessed me. Steve said in the program, this is good. Listen to this. Pay attention. Pay attention. Love in response to goodness is not love. It's reward. Love in response to goodness is not love. It's reward. If you got to do good for God to love you, He's not loving you unconditionally. He's loving you based on what you've done. <laughs> but, but he says, the only way to know that God loves you 
is for you not to deserve it. I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, you know I, I hate to tell on myself, but there are times in my life when I know <laughs> I done screwed up big time. And God comes through in a major way. I mean, anybody experience that? Any, anybody experience God coming through? Well, he's trying to show you that he loves you in spite of you. That it had nothing to do with you. Had everything to do with Jesus. Our faith, our life is built on Jesus. I got to hurry up. Got to hurry up because I got something I want to say. Uh, 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 Pastor Tulich said this, and I'm, I'm through with, with the quotes. He said, it took, oh, this is good. It took God's blood, sweat, and tears to get you in. Why do you think it takes your blood, sweat, and tears to keep you in? That's good. Let me say that again. It took God's blood, Jesus' blood, sweat, and tears to get you in. Why do you think it's going to take your blood, sweat, and tears to keep you in? It took God's blood, sweat, and tears to give you favor in heaven. It, how is it going to take your blood, sweat, and tears to keep you in favor in heaven he's done it all can I tell you something God is so good that he would not risk you losing out on favor after all he's done and went through I think one person you got that y'all just all right let me put it another way let me put it one way let me put it another way let me put it away you work real hard you work parents you work real hard to buy a house and your teenage kid walk up to you and say, can you put it in my name? That's what we're asking God to do with our salvation. Let him pay for it, but put it in our hands to see whether we make it or not. He said, oh, I'm not going to do that. Because the kids are too crazy. Church folks are too crazy. Saints are too crazy. Y'all too fickled. One day you feel like a nut, the next day you don't. I'm not going to put it in your hands. I'm going to put it all in the hands of Jesus. And he did it all. It is finished. You are walking. Listen, I don't know what thunder you're waiting on. I don't know what lightning you're waiting to hit. But you are living your best life right now. I end with this because, Carla, I'm doing everything I can to be through. I end with this. I'm not through, but I'm going to quit. I told you I was one more story. But Steve gave this story that I thought was profound that really sews up the whole night. He gives a story about his daughter. His daughter goes to college, and she's taking AP honor classes. She calls her dad and says, Dad, this class is entirely too hard. I can't do it. Would you please come and get me out? Dad said, I paid all this money. She says, please. She starts crying. I can't do this class. Dad said, okay, I'm going to come up and I'm going to talk to the counselor. So the dad comes up and he talks. He says, counselor, I want you to know that my daughter, she's smart. She does everything good. She's a good kid. 
we need to get her out of this AP class because this is entirely too hard. A counselor looks at her and says, not up to me. It's really up to the professor. So can you go talk to the professor? And she says, well, let's go talk to the professor. They went, it's a true story. They went to go talk to the professor. And as they was going to talk to the professor, the girl is all just shaking, crying. I got to get out of this class. You know, if I do this, that's going to cause me to fail. So he went to talk to the professor. And the professor looked at her and said, I need to get my daughter out of this AP class. And, 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 and this is just terrible. She's, she's falling apart. She's not going to be able to do it. The professor said, hold up, hold, 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 hold. Say, can I talk to your daughter for a few minutes? Says, yes. She looks at the girl and says, I want you to know something. You can leave the class if you want to. But how about before we even start grading system that I will give you an A no matter what happens? Girl said, oh, okay. Says, no matter how bad you do, no matter if you come, if you don't come, you're going to get an A. She walked out smiling. Pastor Steve says, that's what Jesus have done for us. No matter how you do the course he's already given you an A you, you've already passed he's already approved you're already done you got the A already before you even start the class you got the A I can tell this hasn't hit see that's what I'm saying. I, I can tell this hasn't really hit your spirit yet because I don't think you all just heard what I just told you to the degree that I told you that it doesn't matter how you do in the class. You've already got an A. God has already approved of you. That's the reason I got to do some more teaching because I don't think we believe it ourselves. We have been so doctrinated and we have been so used to, but I got to do something. No, you don't have to do it. Jesus plus nothing equals everything. Well, pastor, what you saying? I can go out and sin? No, you're not going to do that when you love him. The more you love him, talk to me. If you had a friend... I end, Missy, I end on this of 10 minutes ago. Thank you. Come here, Daryl. Me and Daryl are friends. Daryl, loan me, loan me, loan me 20, $20. Oh, a dollar. Give me, give me, give me something. All you got is a 20. I take it, 20. <laughs> Daryl loaned me $20. Now, Daryl's going to love me unconditionally. He's going to love me unconditionally. But I'm going to treat Daryl wrong because I'm going to take his $20. <laughs> I ain't going to pay him. But when I see him, hey, Daryl, what's up? See, he ain't Jesus yet. Yeah. <laughs> Daryl gonna love on me. Daryl gonna treat me. Man, I, I know I owe you that $20. Daryl said, man, don't worry about that $20, man. Come on, let's go bowling, whatever. Man, I don't have no money. I got you. And next week, I see Daryl. I said, God, Daryl, I don't have no money, Daryl. Could you, could you? Man, I need some money. I know I hate to ask because I, kn I know what I did last week. But Daryl, Got another 20. Hand me Thank you, Daryl. Man, you know what? Daryl's a good guy. Sooner or later, I'm going to have to say, you know what? I can't keep treating 
him this way. Why, why would I do this when he loves me like this? You, you know, I mean, this man loves me. Why would I hurt him and he keep on loving me? Pretty soon, I'm going to start saying, Daryl, what can I do for you? What, what can I give you, man? I present my body a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, because it's just reasonable because of what he is to me. You know, Daryl's going to the hospital. No, he's not going to the hospital. This, Daryl's going to the hospital. You don't think I'm going to come and see him? He's my friend. It's just reasonable. People who think grace will cause you to sin more don't have an understanding of love. Because I, I love him, man, not only am I going to give you back your money. I don't have my wallet on me, but I would give you some interest <laughs> if I did. Got kids, I'm going to bless this kid. Do you follow what I'm saying? Grace doesn't cause us to sin more. It tells us how much Jesus loves us, and it draws us closer to him. Now, law makes me hide because once he gave me, can I have the 20 back? Just 20. I got the 20 and I didn't do what I supposed to do. Now I'm looking back and he's upset with me. And because he's upset with me because of my sins, I'm going to stay out of his way. <laughs> So we have people who are not sitting in the seats because we've been teaching them to stay out of God's way. When you, when you go to the club, don't come to church. Stay out of God's way. When we ought to be, he said, come. He says, I don't even know where you've been last night. I just love you. Can somebody thank God because it is...